Good afternoon and welcome to Musgrave Park for this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final. PBC of Cork will entertain St Munchins College from Limerick. St Munchins looking to reach their first Munster School Senior Cup final since 2012 with PBC Cork looking to make their second final in as many seasons. We'll have full live coverage from 1.30 this afternoon but before we get to that we spoke to PBC coach Ger Burke and Ger Slattery at Learn Your Run. Ger Burke, a beautiful day for Cup Rugby. Talk to me about what your team are going to have to do well today against a very talented St Munchen side. Very simple, we're going to have to outscore them. We're going to have to have some big D sets to stop them. They're two very similar sides we like to play, they like to play and uh, I think it could be an old fashioned shootout. Um, weather is decent, uh, hopefully the rain stays off, it is windy. Um, as it always here, is here in Musgrave Park, so we'll have to manage that, but uh, so very simply, we're going to have to outscore them. Talk to me about the sense of occasion here in Musgrave Park. It's going to be pretty much a full house for a school's game today. To be a part of that is pretty special. Always. Um, I think Musgrave Park is almost uh, purpose-built for days like today. Days like the Irish 20s, it's a small, compact stadium. When you get fans in, it's, it's amazing, and they're, they're super occasions. Ger Slattery, Cup semi-final day. Um, a win over Ards could reach in the first round, three and a half weeks without a, a competitive game. How are preparations going and what are you wary about with this PBC side? Yeah, look, preparations were great. Obviously, we had plenty of time. Uh, borderline too long, you know. If we didn't have today, I think it would be, you'd be itching to go. Um, but yeah, look, the lads are just looking forward to get out there now. And obviously, against a very good press side, we, we've seen a lot of video on them, obviously. And very lively side, uh, quick backs, quick forwards and, and like to play. So it should be a good game. Prez like to play expansively, but uh, St Munchens College uh, like to play expansively, throwing back to your, your mm. day of, of cup wins yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in yesteryear. But uh, with the sunshine and with the uh, the occasion, we're, we're in for an expansive game today, yeah? Hopefully, yeah. Like, as you said there, both teams want to play, um, so that'll be the aim. Obviously, the win there now, we just have to assess it. It might be a bit tricky, um, but both, both sides want to play rugby, so I think we're in for a good, a good game, you know? You're very welcome back to Musgrave Park for this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final coverage brought to you by the Irish Examiner. I'm delighted again to say that I'm joined by the halfback pairing of Duncan Williams and Johnny Holland. Gentlemen, you're very welcome to a crisp but clear Musgrave Park. Duncan Williams, the crowd is spilling in here. We spoke about the occasion yesterday. It's uh, set up to be a cracker again today. Yeah, such a big crowd. They nearly made me be late for kick-off there. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's good to see there's buses arriving there. The Munchens fans were always quite loud and good entertainment uh, during these games so different vibe to la uh, yesterday I suppose where the CBC crowd weren't allowed here Johnny Holland the game burst into life in the final 15 minutes yesterday but there's a sense of anticipation today with both sides playing expansive rugby we could be in for a real cracker yeah I think it's both back lines against each other today isn't it so um, we'll see if, there, if the ball has been thrown around maybe a small bit more but I think we saw a good rugby yesterday and we saw the occasion obviously what it meant to um, Crescent at the end there when they got their, their equaliser, you know, the crowd were going mad and you have two crowds in here today and they're already making plenty of noise, so it uh, should be a good occasion, but yeah, we'll see a small bit more, um, some, some more looser passes, I think, around the, around the pitch this time. Uh, to explain to our viewers, CBC uh, yesterday drew with Crescent College Comprehensive. They will replay next Tuesday in Toman Park in Limerick. CBC had beaten PBC in the semi-final qualifier a month ago. Since then, PBC have beaten Rockwell by 52 points to 8 to be in today's semi-final. Munchens, on the other hand, winning 19 points to 10 in the semi-final qualifier a number of weeks back. Johnny Holland again. George Slattery spoke in his pre-match interview about a month was almost a hindrance for them, it was almost too long, that sense of anticipation. Would you prefer to be in the Prez camp having played uh, the games in advance or would you prefer to be in the Munchens camp with, with being well, well rested? No, I'd prefer to be in the Prez camp. You know, we spoke about, you know, two weeks or, you know, less time I think is better, especially at this age, you know, they're, they're going to recover well. You know, they're, they're also possibly going to get a, a little bit more nervous when they've got more time to think about it. So maybe Jer, you know, coaching at different levels, maybe at this level, he'd prefer not to have as much time off. You know, at senior level, uh, adult rugby, maybe he'd prefer to have it and get bodies rested. But at this stage, you know, you don't want fellas to be thinking about it too much. You just need to keep their head in the game and keep them focused on it. As St. Munchens uh, take their way to the dressing room, we will take the team's PBC line out as follows. The multi-talented Ben O'Connor is at 15 for PBC. He's accompanied by James Wickstead and Tom Collin in the back three. James O'Leary and Gene O'Leary. Kareem make up the centre partnership. Liam Tuohy and Harry Murphy are the halfbacks for Prez. Rory O'Shaughnessy, who's the captain, was last year's inside centre. He lines out at number eight this afternoon with Alexander Allerson and Finn Roussel as his back row partners. Kean Murphy and Daniel Noonan will make up the engine room for PBC, while Morris Minogue, Michael O'Sullivan and Thomas McCarthy 
are the front row unit. Max Dillon, Peter Wall, George O'Keefe, Alex Davenport, Oscar Squires, Daniel Foley, Oscar Nagel, Scott Kelleher, John Wigington and Luke Sisk O'Mahony are the replacements. The coaches for PBC are Ger Burke and Keen Bohan. The subplot is that Ger Burke is a former St Munchens captain and was the coach of St Munchens when they last reached the cup final way back in 2012. St Munchens College line out as follows. Matt Tapau is at 15, Adam Cusack is at 14 and Tom Wood, son of Keith, is on the wing. Oshin Pepper has been in scintillating form at outside centre as has Gordon Wood, who's Tom's brother, at inside centre. Killian O'Connor and Jake O'Reardon both two talismanic players for Munchens thus far in the campaign are the halfbacks. Liam Angerman, Danny Williamson and Oshin Minogue make up the back row. Mark Walsh and Callum Black in the second row. Tyg O'Brien, Peter Dugan and Rian Burke make up the front row. Ben Newman, Sean Rice, Oscar Vitalin, Billy Power, Tommy O'Driscoll, Tony Foley, Rory McDermott, Conor McCarthy, David Keane, Azad Mohammed, and Donald Kenny make up the bench. And the coaches are Ger Slattery and Andy O'Byrne. Ger Slattery, well versed in Senior Cup rugby, lads. He was uh, the man who kicked the conversion for Keith Earls' try way back in 2006. So plenty of subplots today. Yeah, there's plenty going on. I think you, you, you've you named them all there. And I think a lot of these, the coaches are all coming up against each other, with each other and against each other at uh, senior AL level as well. So there's loads going on. But, you know, two good uh, Schools Cup teams going at it here today and a lot of history with it. So it should be a good, good fixture. Duncan, we spoke about um, perhaps a, a direct game by CBC yesterday. We're expecting an open, expansive uh, game this afternoon. Plenty of Munster schools, uh, guys on side. You're looking forward to it? Yeah, so traditionally I suppose Prez would have played more of an open style uh, rugby compared to CBC. And I suppose for my time, Munchens, you know, I was at hard nose pack. Um, but obviously they've developed their game and have quite a, a good backline now. Um, obviously a bit of pedigree there with the Wood family. Two lads in the centre and the wing. Um, obviously Tony Foley on the bench there as well obviously son of Axel so a lot of pedigree in that uh, St Munchen squad Indeed Johnny we spoke before the game about Munchen's backline perhaps not something we expected coming out of Limerick expansive rugby in, in backlines in schools but they've played some scintillating rugby to get to this stage to win against Art Skull do you expect more of the same or will we see more of the shadow boxing we saw yesterday? I think you'll still see some shadow boxing you know you're in a semi-final and I think that occasion does get uh, into the back of your mind you know so I don't think you know any team will want to go and lose it in the first 20 but if you look at yesterday I think we, we could have seen uh, Crescent play to their strength a small bit more from early on so I think because none of these two teams seem to have the bigger pack or the more dominant pack then maybe they will go at it a small bit earlier on but yeah like the, the fast track here on a 4G pitch big open pitch a lot of wind as well hopefully that doesn't go against it but you know it's a pitch that will bring a lot of rugby out of team so if they have the rugby in them we're going to see it today Duncan CBC beat Prez in a phenomenal game uh, nearly a month ago scoring 12 points in the final 7 or 8 minutes we saw another comeback how much do you think that's going to play on PBC's mind that they've already been beaten as, in, in this stadium and the fact that Munchens are perceived to be favourites by a lot of people coming in does that play on the minds of Prez do you think? Yeah look I suppose PBC probably have had an extra game which means they've probably had that extra couple of weeks of um, you know, getting experience together under their belt so uh, look I don't, obviously CBC drew last week and obviously they beat Prez, but I wouldn't think that'll be weighing on them too much. They know this week is a semi-final and you know, the card at the end of this is a final, so um, I don't think it'll be weighing on them too much. Frank Murphy is the man in the middle this afternoon tasked with officiating. I will leave Johnny Holland tell us about the weather after my faux pas with Matt Aaron yesterday, but it appears, Johnny, that there is a light sprinkling of rain, but the wind is swirling, so it will be difficult early doors from a kicking point of view. Yeah, I think as the teams run out here, we're always looking at the flags in here, and you can see in the sun as well, and in the Dolphin end, it's actually a small bit more consistent today, different to yesterday, so maybe a small bit easier to read, but, um, you know, like you said, with a stand like this, uh, you can never really, really tell. So when you're out there, you know, it dies in certain areas under the stand, in the middle of the pitch, it gets a little bit worse, so we're going to have to watch as, as the game unfolds to see which way it's going Duncan Williams Johnny Holland called uh, I think it was a 30-24 <laughs> uh, game yesterday would you like to play devil's advocate and, and, and tell us uh, what way it's going to go um, I said 24-20 yesterday I'll give it 27-23 today and whoever said that the Munchens pack wasn't very big they're quite a big uh, group was there. I'd just like to point that out I'm I, saying I, the president has just we're getting there. smaller in our old age don't I think that was Johnny Holland having a go at forwards like he was all, all day yesterday uh, we're Prez. not exactly a hands more man yet yeah. we're still a bit of height Prez led out by their captain uh, Rory O'Shaughnessy uh, Johnny Holland in terms of, of Prez 
uh, a name on everyone's lips uh, any time Prez take the field in the last two seasons has been Ben O'Connor, a huge size of a young fella, multi-talented across GAA. Uh, we can expect a big game from him today. Absolutely, and I think if Prez are going to go far in this, they've got a couple of players across that back line. You can see, you know, the condition of Ben. He's played a lot of hurling and football with the Bears, my own home club, so I've been hearing about him for a while. I've been hearing about how I'm going to poach him to rugby and they all want him to stay with GAA and my involvement with Cork. They're all talking about him all the time, so look, it's great to see him on, on, like I said, a fast track. He's going to have a big involvement here, but you know that that Prez backline uh, losing Rory O'Shaughnessy to uh, the, the forwards, which I'm not too happy about. But the athlete synergy, going into the, synergy, yeah. I believe they call it. <laughs> yeah, athlete going into the forwards, so we'll see how they go now. Harry Murphy gets the game underway. The ball is taken by Jake O'Reardon at nine for Munchens. One to watch certainly for the Limerick side this afternoon, and he makes no mistake. It looks very much like Prez had the wind over that side of the pitch. But that's a very good exit at the start of the game, you know, to settle the nerves into the wind like that. Someone with the experience of Jake O'Reardon, obviously representing Ireland at underage level, you know, that's what you're going to need from your halfbacks on a day like today. O'Sullivan with the throw, and Prez look to move it into midfield. O'Leary played Junior Cup last year, weighing in at 90 kilos, a 17 year old, quite the player. Prez looked to switch it back, O'Shaughnessy using his skills from the centre, and it's a lovely little break on the inside from Prez. Early goal from Tom Collin. Collin's got the pace, and it's some stack in Musgrave Park. Prez ripped through St. Munchens in the opening minute, and Johnny Holland, what a play. Yeah, but that, look, if you see Rory O'Shaughnessy putting the strings there as a forward, obviously played in the centre of the pitch last year in the final, so he has the experience, he has the ability to play, and they went straight through him there on the short side in the first play, obviously straight off the training ground, and, um, you know, they're, they've settled the nerves quite early. That's, that's possibly going to settle the nerves off Munchens as well, you know, what could go wrong has gone wrong, it's time to play now. Duncan Williams, a thoroughly enjoyable set-piece move very towards Cian Bohan and Ger Burke seem delighted with that and, and what a start. Oh, I've no doubt Ger Burke and Cian Bohan are delighted with that, right? Yeah, they couldn't have written it better. First play of the game and their first, uh, I suppose, rehearsed set-piece came off, so it's uh, to be fair, it was nicely run as well. You know, you can have all these set-pieces, but usually on the, maybe on the big occasion they get a bit anxious and overrun stuff, but they actually ran it quite well and the execution was good. Ben O'Connor. No stranger to this stage in Musgrave Park. Clean strike from O'Connor. And PBC with the picture perfect start, seven points to nil in this Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi final. Coverage brought to you by the Irish Examiner. And that's one of those plays where the coaches are really taking the credit, aren't they? Patting each other on the back, delighted with themselves. Oh, there's grinning from here to there, they're ready uh, after coming off with the, with the ticking tape. O'Connor, high into the sky, very well taken oh, by Callum Black of St. Munchens. It's a good oh, carry by Ty O'Brien. Met hard by the Prez defence. O'Connor to move it out to the back. Williamson gets his hand for an early carry, but the ball spills out. O'Reardon decides to punt it, but Prez have it on the ground. Munchens retreat back into the field, but perhaps some early nerves perhaps wasn't expecting it, and Munchens will have a scrum and a launch play. The game might have started Martin slower Martin. yesterday, Johnny yeah, Holland, but uh, it's been feeling at a frantic pace in the opening three minutes. Absolutely, and for the neutral standing up here, I think that, that's great to see. You know, we, we spoke about the fast track, so we are seeing the rugby to complement it. Crouch! Find! Set! Okay, back foot. Gordon Wood. On the shoulder of O'Connor, stands in his first receiver. Looks to go out the back, and the ball is loose. And it's Kareem O'Leary on the outside. It's well fielded by Munchens, but Prez. Frank Murphy calls the ball inside. Williamson just picks and goes. Tries to buy a little bit of time for his munch inside. O'Reardon. Onside. It's O'Connor. Good organisation for Munchens, but the PBC defence is resolute. Wait! High ranging kick, it's going to stay in field. It's well fielded by Wickstead. And it's O'Connor. Little scoop on the outside. Will the bounce favour him? O'Connor shepherding the ball over. Hoping for it to go dead. 
And it just does. Well judged by Killian O'Connor in St. Munchens. We'll have a scrum. That wind, Duncan Williams, is uh, a little bit tricky. And you, you see there, even with the large in goal area, if you get the kick wrong, you could be coming the whole way back. Yeah, I was actually hoping that he'd have a bit of a go at a counter-attack to see <laughs> see what kind of mood he was in, in terms of his attacking place. But it was actually a nice kick. He just got unfortunate with the bounce. Um, you know, 4G pitches. Rugby balls are unpredictable. The best size run of 4G, it makes it even more unpredictable. So, um, yeah, we've maybe got a bit of hold of it as well. I'm sure he'll be unhappy with his chase there as well because that ball was dribbling along for a long time. You know, they could have stopped it, made the, the Munchens player put it down and uh, forced a kick out from their own in goal. So, you know, it, it could have been complimented a small bit better. But interestingly, I think, you know, a bit of Ger Burke written all over Liam Tui there at the last scrum, knowing his laws and coming away from the scrum and widening their defence and giving uh, Gene O'Leary, uh, Kareem, a chance to get off the line. And that's disrupted the Munchens' uh, attacking platform. Berkey does read the uh, law book every night before he goes to the bed, so no surprises there. O'Reardon out the back to O'Connor again. They look to get wider. Pepper again. That familiar step off his right foot. We saw him score a scintillating try against Ard Skull in the semi final eliminator. Good Stay carry there. by Oshin Minogue. Black with the carry for Munchens. Tall, rangy second row. And O'Connor says, let's test. The other O'Connor, oh. and he just took his eyes off in the last minute. The wind again causing a bit of problems there, with the ball coming down like a hot nappy. We saw yesterday, Jeddah the Warrior for Crescent attack from where Munchens are. It does look, for all intents and purposes, that that wind is swirling, but it would probably just favour Prez. I think it's favouring yeah. Prez, but I think the whole GA is up in arms there with Ben O'Connor dropping that one. We all <laughs> thought he was just going to take it into the breadbasket and have a go, so um, maybe a small bit of nerves there for him, taking the weight on his shoulders a small bit, but he'll get more chances. It was funny last stretch, I think he had similar, he dropped a couple of high balls, wasn't playing overly great for the first 40, 50 minutes, and I think he got a try and two conversions on the touchline to win yeah. the game, so you know he's obviously got that big game mentality where these mistakes don't bother him, he just dust, him off, dust it off and go to the next job. We were speaking pre-game, uh, Duncan, while you were stuck in traffic with, uh, with with Johnny about him being a big game player. He has that big game mentality about him. He was involved with the Bars, their first win in 29 years. He's marked Tony Kelly in big games, Johnny. But in terms of from the tee and broken field, he's, he's unbelievable. He's a real raw talent. I think raw talent and absolute athlete, and that's why you're speaking about him across a range of different sports. You know, that, like the common denominator there is athleticism. You know, so I think he could probably take to whatever sport he wants to when, when he's built like that, you know. But interestingly, you're looking at the rest of that Prez backline, and I think uh, Whitstead on the wing and James O'Leary in the centre, they're big boys, you know. So once we see the ball into their hands, you know, they, should, they should cause trouble in attack. I think different styles, they look very physically dominant, whereas Munchens are possibly going to run quite clever Crouch. lines and, and bring their attack into it as well. Five. Ryan Burke is OK to continue after some treatment. Set. Stay. As O'Reardon feeds the scrum. O'Reardon has a little snipe himself and gets inside. And it's a lovely little line from Wood. Munchens with their first entry to the 22 here. What can they make of it? O'Connor decides to dink it in behind. And it's very well fielded by Prez's number six, Fionn Roussel. All behind the kicker, A little bit frustrating there, Duncan. Probably Don't should have kept the ball point. in hand. Yeah, look at... I don't know how many entries you're going to get into the opposition 22 and kick it away, but your first one is probably not the best... Uh, Probably not what they spoke about before the game, but look, they have a 20 or a goal line drop out here now and a chance to go back at them again. And if I gave Ger Burke the credit for the first one, it was inside the nine this time that they went, so they obviously recognised it the first time that Prez were over chasing. 22 drop out hangs high in the wind and it's taken by Tom Wood. Munchens growing into the game. To wire carries Black with the clear out. O'Connor again decides this time to go out the back. Wood. Not held in the tackle, great foot drive from Wood, again into the 22. O'Connor, cries a hard line inside, Black. Answers the call, but the ball is forward. Munchens are certainly here to play, Johnny Holland. Yeah, they are, and uh, you know, Duncan spoke about getting territory and getting possession. You know, I wouldn't say two ways to possessions, they're definitely going to play. But, you know, we saw yesterday in the game as well, it took a long time for, for the first score to go on the board, so the earlier they get that, the better. Yeah, O'Reardon and O'Connor look like uh, the halfbacks from Munchens. They're like two tidy players as well. You know, they seem to have a good understanding of what the game plan is and what they're trying to do, and understanding of the momentum of the game as well. Crouch, find, set. Liam Tuohy with the feed. The ball is 
at the base with O'Shaughnessy. Now O'Shaughnessy does very, very well in that arc. He's tackled well by Minogue at seven, but Prez on the front foot and O'Connor with a huge boot. Matt Depau on the ball. Frank Murphy in deep discussion. Depau throws it out. Wood again with a great carry. Tom Wood, that is. But there's a judge to have a little knockdown on the ground. You can see O'Shaughnessy's athleticism having played in the centre last year is a huge asset to, to PBC at eight. Yeah, I think he's just one, one inside on that play, isn't he? Normally, being at 12 and possibly catching a ball, put him straight off the back of the scrum and see what he can do. But what a size of a kick from Ben O'Connor to put him downfield. And then, interestingly, Matt Tapu, um, you know, having a go, having a little goose step. I've been reading about him this morning. I know his heritage. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see him in a bit more uh, broken field as well. Crouch! Bind! Set! Tui with the feed. O'Connor hiding right in behind Harry Murphy here. Prez and they do use O'Connor on the inside. And he does get ground and his lovely little hands from Prez in interplay. And it's O'Leary who throws the ball out. Prez just looked to recycle. And it's O'Leary Kareem with a good carry, but he's met, met very well. By Munchen's back row through Liam Angerman. Prez again, lovely little yeah. interplay. Williamson out the back to Murphy. They're out the back here again, O'Shaughnessy. O'Connor out the back to Wickstead. Wickstead plays it inside, it's O'Leary Kareem. He's got great footwork here, Prez five metres short of the line. Piling into the rock, but Munchens, very resolute, get over the ball. And Danny Williamson is getting the plaudits there. Munchens survived that one, but Prez's interplay, absolutely sensational there. Yeah, it was lovely. You could see uh, the benefits of O'Shaughnessy again, his handling having played in the centre before. But uh, number six, Danny Williamson, had a great reef on the far side and then got back and made the poacher under the trail lines. It was great work from him. O'Connor's kick in tricky conditions bring Munchens just short of the 22. The pace of the game a lot a lot higher than it was at the start start yesterday, lads. But I think that attacking play from Prez was actually like nicely intricate, good uh, good technical lines. They were hiding on the inside there, Rory O'Shock can see not getting out too far, which means he has more time on the ball and then setting the lads away on the edge. So like it's it's not by mistake that the ball got to the edge there. It's nice and technical from the inside. Yeah, well, O'Shock can see did well too. He took the ball out the back, saw the defence sitting off and re-engaged the line again and Move the pass on again, whereas if you just stayed, didn't re engage the line, the defence would just shift it off and made it easier. Bit of miscommunication at the Munchens line out, but the ball is in the hands of O'Reardon. He hands it off to Angerman, whose neat footwork gains him a little bit of yards. Munchens clear their lines, ball swirling in and around, and Wickstead takes it. It's his 15, Ben O'Connor. He's had a lot of involvements running across the field. His teammate perhaps wasn't expecting that ball there. Yeah, like the Munchens exit straight from the, the James Lowe handbook, wasn't it? Having a left footer. Um, Tom Wood is out there and being able to clear the line. So you can see Jake O'Reardon is actually controlling things nicely, isn't he? He's not too overexcited. Um, and it's good to have a, a wise head inside there, halfback. We spoke about Ben O'Connor and the size of his kick there, but that was a pretty big kick from the from Munchens into the wind there to get them over the halfway line. Much like yesterday, uh, Johnny, you reckon it, it's quite difficult to make touch on this near touchline? It's probably going to be played in that corner again. Yeah, it looks like it's blown off that touchline, to be fair. So, um, a big kick in the conditions, uh, but they won't be finding touch too easily on this side. O'Reardon decides to go down the touchline, gets outside, O'Shaughnessy finds Williamson on the inside again. Munchens find an edge. Rian Burke demands the ball and carries. Eking forward with yards are St. Munch and Ciro Connor again to Wood. Pepper has it, decides to have a go. Well marshaled by O'Leary of Prez. Decent interplay and good turnover ball for Prez here, where they're very dangerous. O'Shaughnessy plays the ball out to Roussel. Advantage over, says Frank Murphy, and it's Cochrane again. The try score decides to play it over the top. There's a lot of ground here to make up for Matt Depau. And he's spilt the ball. <coughs> O'Connor's in a tussle here to go, but it's well fielded. O'Connor, no Reardon. 
with his left foot has sliced the ball, present acres of space here on the right, as the ball has been called by Wickstead. It's a good read, he's put him under pressure, but Wickstead on the move, dummies the kick. Pepper and Wood doing very well to cover tackle for Munchins. Yeah, it was great work for Munchin Pepper there. Alderson plays nine, the number seven. Game, as we said, being played at a frantic pace. Prez deciding to go at the back. Murphy, he's got his second row. Kean Murphy there. Munchins just slowing that ball at the ruck. O'Shaughnessy again. Nice. O'Leary, nice little interplay between backs and forwards. But the second last pass doesn't seem to go to hand, but PBC with ball in hand seem very, very dangerous. And I think they, you know, they've had a couple of attacks now. They're not going to get all of that for the whole game. So like we said earlier, they're going to have to, you know, convert it at some stage because it all seems great now playing loads of rugby. But if Munchens get their, their purple patch in the game, you know, they might live to regret that. But no, they are playing a lot of rugby and you can see James O'Leary is quite dominant in the middle of the pitch. He's able to get into contact, but get the ball away over the top of the, the top of the tackle as well. So he's given space on the edges. Uh, Rory O'Shaughnessy again showing his handling there, taking the pass, delaying his pass then and just sucking in the Munchens defence and creating the gap for the man outside him. O'Leary at 12 uh, was in the Junior Cup winning team last year, uh, just a TY student at 16. So I think uh, Ger Burke and Keane Bohan themselves have seen that last year's centre is going to number eight because they can see what a big uh, what a big player this kid is going to be. Yeah, quite possibly. I, I came across uh, James at the Carcon underage camps and uh, he was doing coaching. He he looked like a senior player, you know, he's a big boy, and uh, we can see he's doing damage in the middle of the pitch for Prez. Noel Keneally's days may be numbered with the uh, Cork Constitution, but for the time being, seven points to nil here for PBC against St. Munchens in this Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi final coverage in association with the Irish Examiner. CBC and Crescent College Comprehensive had an enthralling 15 points all draw yesterday afternoon and will replay next Tuesday at 2 p.m. in Toman Park. The sun peaks out here in a crisp, cold Musgrave Park this afternoon. Both sets of supporters in full voice. O'Reardon with the feed. It's at the feet of Angerman of Munchens. They use Wood again as first receiver. It does very well. Beats two would-be tacklers. And Munchens with some much welcomed yards. O'Reardon, right foot at this time. Comfortable kicking off both feet. And it's well fielded, excellently fielded by Munchens there in that right touchline. Tom Wood. Both Woods having big impact in the game early. O'Connor, there's a chance here for Munchens to go wide if they want, and that's where they're going. Pepper, high floating pass over to Pau. Brave from Tom Wood. Reardon again to Black. Munchens playing, rolling the dice a little bit. About 30 metres in their own goal, and O'Connor says, enough of that. And finds a good touch. That's clever play, isn't it? Prez around the front foot there in their defence. And um, we saw Christians with a big defensive line yesterday. This one is a bit more evenly matched in terms of physicality. Um, that's a good good decision from, from the out half to kick his team downfield. Yeah, great quick kick by James O'Reardon and the chase by Cusack. Uh, it was even better, you know, he's running flat out there and still managed to get in the air and compete. That's exactly what you want to see from your winger. The wind picking up in the far side. O'Shaughnessy moves towards the front. Nice little three-step line out, but Black gets a hand in there. But the ball comes back in the press side. O'Leary has it. Uses Murphy as inside runner. Wait! Prez moved the ball downfield. And that's a nice little kick and gives decent field position. That's another tidy kick, isn't it? Two technically very good kicks. Um, so they're, they're cancelling each other out here. But I think on this, um, you'll be looking at the, the wind blowing in favour of Prez here, but Munchens are still able to clear their lines. And on this surface, you can drill a ball along the ground as well and still get field position. Now, it might be easier to come back at you with the wind that, at Prez's back at the moment, but both teams exiting quite well. O'Reardon and O'Connor both clearing well, as are Tui and Murphy for PBC. Munchens have elected for a five-man line-out. O'Shaughnessy gets up in front. PBC. 
targeting Munchen's line out early and profiting. Wickstead keeps the ball alive somehow. Smart play by Noonan of Prez. They're 15 metres in from the touchline. Discipline from both sides so far has been good. Little cross field kick. Cusack underneath it but outside. O'Connor just about brings him down. Cusack did extremely well field position wise to go. Black with a lovely soft hands. Ryan Burke won't thank him for the pass. O'Connor moves it out the back. Little half step on the inside from Tapau. And Munchen is trying to play but that not going to hand and now Prez will have another attacking platform with a line out 10 metres outside the 22. Your mark. It doesn't have the sense of an old Munster Schools knockout game, lads. Both teams are taking chances early doors. It's great to see. Thankfully. Uh, yeah, it certainly started a bit livelier than uh, yesterday's game as well, but hopefully we have the same finish in, the, in store. O'Sullivan finds his man. It's O'Leary. O'Leary Kareem to O'Connor. He's got Cockland the try scorer on the outside. He wants his around the full back, Cockland, but Pepper okay. with a wonderful try saving tackle, but Prez going coast to coast in again. Their skill set shining here in Musgrave Park. Yeah, Tom Collin looks dangerous anytime he gets the ball. He's beaten the first uh, first defender and he's uh, got a bit of electric pace in him as well. Handling in the middle, middle of the pitch was impressive, wasn't it? They, they've had that a few times now where they're in close contact and they're getting passes away and they're not hopeful passes. I think they, you can see by the way they're playing. They know they're coming off, you know, so they've done that a few times already. Sitting down the Munchens defenders. Munchens now under the cash, eight metres from their line. They go for black, but again, it's stolen. Munchen's Daniel Noon, Prez's Daniel Noonan, excuse me, doing very, very well, and they're on the attack here. Bit of a loose pass, O'Leary Kareem dancing around and still on the move. O'Leary Kareem, a great player. <laughs> Munchen's looking to get over the ball, and O'Shaughnessy says he's going to have a goal. Stay here. People trying to get their breath here in Musgrave Park, Prez. Looking to get quick ball here. The pick and jam, both players being careful not to pre-latch. Frank Murphy says advantage, they're on the move here, and Prez is going to score, and it's O'Leary Kareem. And we saw yesterday with CBC and present comp deciding three was not enough. Prez decided they wanted at least five, and they've gotten it. Yeah, I think it was a very patient attack from Prez there, you know, they... He was the forwards, picked and go, picked and went a couple of times, tightened up the Munchen's defence, and then obviously had this little uh, play set up uh, from the training park, out to 12, uh, back in the inside to 10, with 13 running off him then, so nicely executed. Great variety of, of playing the 22 there, Johnny, keeping defenders guessing, and uh, he more or less went in untouched. Yeah, but when you look at it's James O'Leary, you know, using his skill set, he's been bashing it up a few times and then he has some passes over the top. This time he's drawing all the defenders and, and putting the ball elsewhere, you know, so a great little bit of um, subtlety from him. But it's what you want to see in there. The forwards have had a, a couple of goals, but you need the backs then to lighten the load. So, you know, the ratio of two is to one or three is to one. The forwards go three times if the backs taken for one just to give him a breather. So, Prez uh, worked that very well. O'Connor. A little bit more difficult in the first conversion from Collins Troy in the opening minute. Lines it up. O'Connor strikes it incredibly well in the conditions. That is a top level kick. He likes that side. That was the one last year as well to to get the win. And Ben O'Connor's conversion means the score here in Musgrave Park in his Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi-final is 14 points to nil as we approach the 24-minute mark. Munchens haven't played poorly, Johnny Holland, but uh, Prez taking their chances when they've arisen. Well, I think that's exactly it. Prez has played a lot of positive rugby, haven't they? And a lot of passes have come off, so they're really going at it. And it's good to see in a knockout game in the semi-final that teams are going to play early on. Fielded by Captain O'Shaughnessy, Tuhi. This ball is going to bounce here, a little bit of mismanagement, but the bounce favours, and the ball is in the hands of Oshin Pepper of Munchens, and he's an elusive broken field runner. Evading three would-be tacklers there, O'Reardon. It's O'Connor. 
And O'Connor looking for a 50-22 here. The ball is going to hang up. And O'Connor feels very well. Ball was caught inside. O'Connor sends it back down. Well tackled on that side. But good breakdown work in black. Decides four. to pick it up. There's four men, or three men in the backfield here for Prez. There must be a bit of space for Munchens. O'Connor. Decent carry from St. Munchens here as they're in the middle of the field. Black again. He's got through a good bit of work in the first half. O'Connor again. Pepper. Nice little flat pass to the power. Munchens have an opportunity here. They're on the inside. Little dink over the top for Tapao himself. Is the bounce going to favour him? It is. Tapao. Oh. What a score from St. Munchens. And out of nothing, Munchens got on the short side. Tapao with. I have no doubt you are going to see that in highlights for many weeks to come. But uh, game on again. Yeah, geez, I was just about to <laughs> murder him for doing the second chip when he came off. Totally redeems himself. What a kick. But that's off both feet, is it? But interestingly, yeah. you see the, the distribution on the inside. I think uh, Killian O'Connor has been quite sharp uh, so far in the game. His distribution has been crisp, and that gives space on the outside. He looks like a really good out half. Um, but Oshin Pepper with the second pass. So there's good quality there, good quality passes, and it gives him a chance to bring in the bit of brilliance at the end of the line as well. Yeah, it was a great flat pass to, to Powder on the edge of the line. A lovely little supporting line from Oshin Minogue, but Tapao saw on the move that Prez were trying to shadow that pass, so he had to... Could have been an awkward conversation if that bounced into touch, but... O'Connor... Half a metre in from the touch line. Strikes it well. It's just going to tail off to the right. Very, very difficult kick. In the exact same spot that Ono Callahan managed to draw the game for Prez yesterday, but lads, 26 minutes in, and it's been worth the entry fee alone. Absolutely, like that, that's a tough kick for O'Connor there, that the wind has changed today, that's a tough goal to kick into. He actually had a very good stab at it, great strike, but a lot of rugby being played here, um, and it's great to see Matt Tapao, you know, unbelievable. You said you'll see it in the highlight reels, you'll see that for quite a while, I think. Ben O'Connor will restart, he shapes as if he's going to go down the middle. Munchens will restart after the ball did not go 10. I think that's just a bit of experience at, at school's level, isn't it? We, we saw that a few times yesterday after scores that the ball was, was kicked straight out. And, you know, all you're looking for there is just to get the ball back into play, set your defensive line, get the ball back, and then settle the nerves a small bit. So, you know, obviously that hasn't happened this time. And Munchens have a midfield scrum, a, a very dangerous attacking platform to have another cut off press. 3 3 split as O'Reardon. Goes to the side of his halfback partner O'Connor. He's got Pepper outside, but a little dink over the top. Ball bounces. O'Connor does very well to cover up the ground as Pepper slips and O'Connor hits Coughlin. Colin with a lovely little kick down. There's going to be a lot of chase here. What a kick from Colin. Duncan, you called it earlier. His involvements have been uh, have been prolific between tries and uh, landing munchins right back down in. And it looks like it was a 50 22, and it is. That, yeah. yeah. It was actually a great play, Ben O'Connor let the ball bounce one, caught it nice and casually, drew in the man and just put Colin away down the touch, or down the touch, and then an excellent kick from so close to the touch and to get that far up the pitch. Michael O'Sullivan has the ball in his hands, O'Shaughnessy loaded at two for Prez, takes the ball at two, ball. Black goes up, Munchins doing their best Black to bring it down, Frank Murphy says the ball was brought down. down. Prez will use the advantage, they're riding the 22 so far has been irresistible, they move it around, O'Leary Kareem and O'Leary has it again and O'Leary, he's over! And PBC with three entries to the 22 have managed to come away for three tries but Johnny Holland said Munchens won't be happy with that defence. No, they won't be happy with the defence but the, the press centre partnership is unbelievable so far, you know, the footwork and contact, they're, they're always looking for offloads and they, they clearly know each other quite well, you know, so uh, they know each other all the time and that's just a great bit of finishing but yeah, Munchens will but they won't want to look at that back on, on the screen. James O'Leary and Jean O'Leary, Kareem Cousins, uh, if I'm correct by Johnny Holland's family tree checking earlier on. According to Coach Bohan there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless he was winding me up, but um, Cousins in the middle of the pitch, obviously, as I said, they know each other quite well and, and gelling there. To go from Junior Cup 
winning side last year straight into a senior setup is uh, is not for the faint-hearted, and he is taking it in his stride to say the least. It's easy to take it in your stride when you're that size as a <laughs> sixteen-year-old. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, look, he looks quite impressive. Uh, as Johnny said, he's always looking for an offload. He's got good footwork, and he's uh, able to ride the contact as well. Ben Inter- O'Connor adds the extras. Interestingly, you know, he won last year. Doesn't really care to lose at this stage, is he? So um, maybe he's riding high with his confidence, and clearly he's taking everything on as well. So uh, not not going to take a step backwards today. Frank Murphy stops the clock as we enter added time. About five minutes to go in this first half. O'Shaughnessy fields the ball well, moves it off to his second row, Daniel Noonan. And Johnny Holland, you called it early doors. With Black decides Ooh. to go. Should be yellow card for number five there. Good little interplay, Munchins looking to go. Most likely the conditions, but it's both sets of players looking when they're given penalties to play ball, which is great to see. Yeah, they are. They're uh, again, like we said, it's going to be <laughs> manic attacking, um, attacking rugby. So there's a lot of pace we put on the game. Number five for Prez there, Keir Murphy was a bit lucky there. For uh, obviously they took the quick tap and he tackled him straight away, straight away without being back ten. I've seen Led Simbin for less than that. And it's a slice off the boot of O'Connor. To O'Connor again, and he just lumps it down the field. He's giving it to Oshin Pepper. Got the ball in a similar position towards Scholar. They scored in the right hand corner. Pepper likes to go direct. Met by a black and white wall of Prez players. Munchins attack through Mark Walsh. Williamson. Munchins on the cusp of the 22 here as a rear and likes to come back down the touchline. Murphy says advantage. Just for a knock on, but Munchin's on the way through and it's anger. It's Minogue and he's on the way in and he's gonna go short and the line is over. And Oshin Minogue, tit for tat in this Munster School Senior Cup, but Munchin is never saved by attitude. And it's their second try immediately after press score. A barnstorming run, wasn't it? But you know, you look at the quality throughout the pitch and he's played under 18 clubs and schools, so he's used to these big occasions as well. Um, and similar to th- the last try, you know, he's, he's bounced off a couple of contacts there and he's had a great finish. I think it was, it was tough on Killian O'Connor. He's got a lovely slow kicking action, but he, he got that one wrong into the corner and he was clearly upset with himself. But Ben O'Connor gave Munchins another chance to get back with Oshin Pepper. He set the platform and that's another good try to get them back in the game. It's nice play by Minogue there. The ball was quick. He saw nine with, uh, the Prez nine was standing at pillar and just picked the wind and picked on the a smaller man and managed to ride the tackle and get into open country. O'Connor lining this one up, similar position. Started the last kick on the left hand side of the post, but it just faded to the right. This win went straight, but just to the left and wide, a very difficult kick for O'Connor. But St. Munchen's showing variety in attack, and they're pretty dangerous from anywhere in the pitch. The score is now PBC 21, St. Munchen's 10. Decent game, lads. Yeah, and Prez looked like they're in control, especially on the, the scoreboard, 21-10, but we, we don't really know from up here how those conditions feel on the pitch. I think, you know, with Ben O'Connor's big boot in the second half, maybe they'll get away with it a small bit when they're kicking into it. Both teams can run the ball too, so, you know, the weather might not have as big an advantage when you can run the ball to length of the pitch, but it's definitely having an, uh, an advantage for Prez here first. The one to attack seems to be contagious. Prez came out, obviously, looking to attack from the start, and then Munchins have reciprocated, so it's been quite a, a good entertainment between end to end, both sides really having a go off it. Williamson and Cole putting Munchins into a decent place for a Reardon. Who's a high, kick. high hanging kick. And Frank Murphy says it was a little knock on there, and Prez will restart with a scrum five metres from the touchline. The variety in attack from both sides. Johnny Holland has been. Uh, been very impressive. It's it's pretty much heads up rugby. It's not very system based. Yeah, I've been going against you, and I've been watching both backlines going at it. You know, <laughs> the backline have uh, donated a player to the forwards for Prez as well. But no, it's, it's very technically good. Um, like we said earlier, there's a lot of offloading going on, a lot of positive play, and they're they're really going at it now. Yeah, as you said there, the offload, but the skill sets have been quite good. You know, we've had 
numerous pairs in both back lines put in nice kicks the passing has been crisp and the interplay between forwards and backs has been very good as well so it's good to see PBC looking to potentially make a change here Alex Davenport has the tracksuit off but it looks like he's going to stay where he is for the time being 34 and a half minutes on the clock here in Musgrave Park in his Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi-final in association with the Irish Examiner. Tuohy with the feed. Murphy to Kareem O'Leary. Back to Murphy again. Lovely little interplay. Calling on the move. They've cut through Munchins here. He's got two men outside. The ball is in the hands of Wickstead. Pepper again. On both touchlines now has had massive, Leave massive tackles to save Munchins. Prez to O'Shaughnessy. Carry very hard, eking up the yards. Wickstead gingerly back to his feet on the right hand touchline. Black tried to strip the ball there, and Prez on the move here. He's, got, he's on the outside, and he's going to get it. A beautiful second. Seemed like he was running across the field into no man's land, but he changed on the arc. And he dots down with Johnny Holland again, that Munchen's defence won't be happy, but take no, nothing away from Roussel. Yeah, I was wondering where, where he was going. I think he was the only one that knew. You're not like, wondering now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, you know, Ger Sattery won't be happy with how his defence haven't come up and put him under more pressure there because he, he shouldn't be able to run across the pitch so far. But I think, you know, you, you see the good set piece from Prez earlier on. You know, you're looking at the, the Munchen's halfbacks and they're clearly in the line of sight and they're really controlling the game, but the Prez halfbacks um, Liam Tui and Harry Murphy, they're just facilitating the talent that they have around them and the running lines are cutting Munchens apart from set-piece. Yeah, it was a great uh, starter off the set-piece, but as we said there, I think uh, when Colin broke through, he passed outside. Had he looked inside, uh, Liam Tui was right inside and I think he would have gone under the post. You know, Johnny, and whenever we're coaching, we always say, you know, once you get that pass, or give that pass, make sure you have the upfield uh, support line because always back in the inside, that's where the tries are to be had. Yeah. The half-backs imparting knowledge for the, the second row forward this not afternoon. That ever, not that I ever <laughs> did it myself or had to speak to it like, but... O'Connor, all three tries. Four tries, excuse me, for Prez. Has been converted by O'Connor. Just looks effortless from the tee from O'Connor uh, and Prez, as you said, Johnny Holland. For guys this young to be able to execute High skills, ball to the line is very, very impressive. Yeah, it's the way they're tucked in, it's the connection in their attacking play. Um, that, that's what I'm most impressed with. It's, it's clearly um, well practiced and practiced a lot. Ben O'Connor there kicking back towards his, his love of the bars, kicking over that direction, and he keeps spitting the post. O'Shaughnessy plucks the ball out of the air for Prez. And Liam Tui. That was backwards. That was backwards. Tabao's ball seems to have went backwards, but a rare error from the officials this afternoon. And Prez will have another starter playing. Judging by, judging by their attacking platform here, Prez will be licking their lips with this opportunity just before the half. Yeah, I think that's a freebie just before half time now. If, if something comes of this, you know, Munchens are going to be under ferocious pressure. O'Connor and Wood having a defensive chat for Munchens. Tuohy takes the ball from O'Shaughnessy to Murphy to Kareem O'Leary and he hits O'Connor in a flat line and O'Connor's going to go here and he's not going to be caught and O'Connor is going to score Prez's fifth try and like a knife through butter Johnny Holland Prez irresistible in attack from that set piece yet again yeah I think we just spoke about um, their quality from set piece I, I said that Munchens will be under pressure maybe Frank Murphy will be under a small bit of pressure as well I don't think that was a knock on but you know he can't defend for Munchens that's a, a well executed play from Prez and Ben O'Connor you know in the limelight again a few of the Munchens heads were down there walking back under the post after that so luckily uh, half time can't come quick enough for them now and just get back into the change room and, and regroup do you know we spoke about um the halfbacks with Prez just facil facilitating others like that was a quick pass out to 13 and it was it was all you know focused on the Munchens 13 and wing channel there and he's cut through the middle of the two of them so you know the halfbacks playing with no ego leaving the pairs around them do the damage 
in quite an unbelievable first half for 45 points have been scored in Musgrave Park. PBC lead by 35 points to 10 against St. Munchens. Uh, Duncan Williams, your, your take on that first half. PBC's brilliance, but Munchens quite not at the races at so, in some instances defensively. I wouldn't say they're not at the races, but to be fair, Prez have been very good and put their defence under pressure and, you know, some a few moments of magic from Colin, Ben O'Connor and a few others have uh, really put Munchens under pressure. But I think, you know, Johnny was talking about uh, the way they're looking to play the game and stuff, but I... You know, they have a game plan, but obviously they understand what they're trying to do. So if they make errors within those game plans, they can problem solve themselves as opposed to the coaches having to come on and tell them. So if they're not tucked enough in terms of the se- in terms of second line attack or they're too wide, etc., you know, they know themselves, they understand what they're trying to do and why they're doing that. So they have to problem solve themselves. Johnny, uh, the O'Leary's and O'Leary Kareem in the centre have stole the show thus far uh, uh, with, with, with O'Connor at 15. Has there been any other highlights other than first phase attack for you? Um, I think there's been a bit of phase attack as well from Prez in the first half, you know, when they were further up the pitch and they were, um, you know, they had to build sustained pressure. They had lovely offloads. They had um, nice, you know, crisp passes, short passes that we spoke about. To be fair, I think Munchens have actually played rugby. You know, the Prez have executed really well from first phase. It might seem cheap when Munchens look back on it, maybe a couple of defensive lapses, but, um, you know, I think it, it's really been the brilliance of Prez, the brilliance of them from set piece, the brilliance of their attack, and they'd be very happy with that first half. We spoke with the wind being a factor. I don't think the wind is a it's not a 25 point win, certainly not. You know, so it's a great attacking game that Prez have played, and they put themselves in a great position now going forward. Duncan Williams, I won't give you the unenviable task of Jurs Laddery's uh, team talk, but uh, what will Prez be saying at half time, if anything, to improve on in the second half? Yeah, look, I suppose Prez will just say, you know, that's the first half done, second half's a different game, it's nil all. You know, we can't get complacent and, and carried away with it. We've got to keep playing and not just think that that's it done now. Whereas Munchens, you know, they've got nothing to lose now. They need to just go after it. Same, pre- same as I said about Prez, treat it as nil all and try and win the second half and see what comes of it. We spoke about Hail Mary times uh, with, with uh, CBC and Prez yesterday, with, with uh, CBC and uh, Comp, excuse me camping two scores down is it a case where Munchens have to completely rewrite the playbook now and play everything or is there still time to work a score and get back in 25 points is a huge huge game but it's 35 minutes or, or the cup run is over yeah it's 35 minutes but that's actually a long time like Prez have obviously scored 35 points in the first 35 minutes so like it, it is very doable I think they need to tighten up their defence because you know if they start leaking one if one or two tries more from Prez it's not going to be ca- like they won't catch them you know, so I think defensively they need to be solid. I think they need to just be very clever about how they reach their next score or the first score of that second half. If they can keep it quite controlled like that, it's not really Hail Mary time because it's too early in the game. You know, so if they can be nice and controlled, win the territory, get their possession back and go and get their score. But obviously the longer that half goes on without getting that score or if they concede one, that's going to be a, a mountain to climb. So I think nice and structured, be in control, get up the pitch, you know, probably use that win a small bit to, to box Prez in. And if they can get something off the back of that, it's game on. Yeah, I think as well, Prez won't fear holding on to the ball. You know, they've obviously been able to hold on to it quite well and they're obviously putting Munchen's defence under pressure. So they'll be happy enough that if they get the ball inside their own half, they're happy enough to work themselves out of there by playing as opposed to kicking it. Is there anything that you do defensively uh, from the set piece, uh, particularly off scrum for Munchen's to try and stop the Prez attack or is it just that good? I think it's been really good, like without seeing it back there right in front of me, but the last one went through them, you yeah. know, so I think that's a bit of a coach killer, you, like anything but through you. Now, obviously, you've got, you've got to get the release from the inside as well and mm. be able to make better decisions in the middle of the pitch, but I think you would be saying to them in the dressing room, make them work harder for us, don't let them go through the middle of you. And, you know, there's probably a few more technical points when you look at that on, on a replay or whatever else, but I think you're going to have to make them work a bit harder. You can't score from first phase attack like that if you're the defensive coach. Yeah, I think going through, the, as Johnny said, going through the middle is a killer for them at least make them throw it to the outside where you can always grab it back and maybe have a second bite at it but um, you know I suppose Ben O'Connor came on that short line realistically you know the prowess that he has you know I suppose the winger probably should just look at hitting him and then maybe if it goes out the back they'll scrap it back to him but I think yeah. if you look at the, the damage that the centres did for Prez as well, you know, there obviously was a lot of, th- there seemed to be space on the edge as well. If I'm at the back of Ben O'Connor, I think there would have been a small bit of trouble too. So maybe the the, the early exchanges from the two centres that Prez have had means that there's a lot of attention on them now, but Prez have been very clever. Like we spoke about it at the start, um, when James already threw the pass for the try uh, earlier on in the half, he was able to shift the point of contact to someone else after taking a lot of the, the heat, you know, and I think they've done that again, taking a lot of the heat in the centre and giving it to someone else who's, who's been able to be, get the benefit of it. We've seen Munchens with their ability to bounce back through scores from Tapau and Minogue individually. If we cast our minds back to a month ago, Christians did score 12 points in the remaining six or seven minutes. So there will be a little bit of a reference point from 
Bohan and Burke in that changing room that this game is not over and done with, even though it's a 25 point game. Yeah, and I think at this level as well, you know, players will get nervous or, you know, one score leads to a second score and you kind of can compound errors at times. So the coaches will be all over them saying that we need to just, you know, they need to solidify this at the start of the second half, make the clock tick without anything happening first, and then maybe they can start to play again. So, like Duncan has mentioned, it, you know, it's not exactly a second game, but from Prez's perspective, they're starting a shorter game, 25 points up. So don't do anything wild. You don't need to go and prove to everyone that you can attack because they clearly can. So they just need to be nice and controlled and, you know, this, the clock would probably run out on Munchens, but, you know, we would have said that yesterday too and, and we'd prove it to be wrong. So um, I think it's all to play first. Yeah, I think Munchens just need to come out and, you know, firstly, you to get the first score and then take in the five minute blocks. Keep trying to win those five minute blocks, trying to get the first score and just kick on from there. A Roy of the Rovers finish for anyone who's over 30 years of age uh, tuning into this uh, Irish Examiner broadcast of the Pinergy Munchens School Senior Cup semi-final. Uh, 35 points to 10, I'm not sure has there been a bigger semi-final comeback. But there's always today to rewrite the history book, so uh, the second half certainly will be interesting. Prez leaving St. Munchen's wait a little bit longer out here. My, sco my score prediction's been blown out of the water anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something we're good at, don't, don't worry. See, Munchen's, as we said, out on the pitch at PBC, led by their captain, Rory O'Shaughnessy who had an immense first half. It's very much a case, Johnny, of PBC not taking their foot off the gas, but Munchens will need to up it a couple of gears. Yeah, I think you mentioned, you know, Christian's getting a lot of scores laid on in the game. Uh, Prez don't need to go within themselves. They've obviously gotten this score by playing, you know, well, uh, well within their capabilities, you know, and uh, they played a lot of positive rugby. So they don't need to, you know, go within themselves by any means, but I think it's just that control, um, just take the clock away from Munchens and and uh, you know, play with play with the, the scoreboard on their side. O'Connor well, restarts the game, taken very well by Daniel Noonan of PBC. Wind swirling again. Munchins trying to make life difficult for Prez, but Tuhi trying to work a right-footed box kick here, and Tuhi kicks down the middle of the field. Ball is fielded by Tapau. Scored that wonderful try in the first half. O'Connor moves it out to Angerman. Angerman with a good carry. Five metres in from the touchline, O'Reardon. Hits Black. And finds a lovely little offload to Rian Burke. He's loose head. O'Connor calling for the ball. They move out the back. Wood finds a shot, soft shoulder on the inside and Munchins just over the 10 meter line, O'Connor again, tried to forge an opportunity, Pepper again, stepping on that inside shoulder. <laughs> Munchins trying to be enterprising there, but PBC's defense holding firm. Yeah, and I think while they were going through those phases, I was thinking to myself, did they do that once in the second, in the first half, possibly one long phase of play where they built the phases, and there I thought they were going to start doing it and holding on to possession, but unfortunately the error came. And I think off that kick receipt there, the Tapo cut and he carried up the middle, it was on to go back down the short side there for Munch, and so I think that's something to keep an eye on. Been reliably informed that not only are the O'Leary's cousins, but James won a minor football championship with Douglas last September too. I'm not interested in Douglas, it's all the bars <laughs> up here. <laughs> Prez on the attack here, O'Connor. Well taken on the outside by Colin again, but he's well marshalled by Adam Cusick of St. Munchens, but again, scintillating attack from PBC going coast to coast. Yeah, it's a right little battle there between Colin and Cusick. <laughs> they were on the far side for the first half, so it'll be good to get a close look at them here. Peter Dugan has got Callum Black as his two jumper. Spread back. But a shot and see again. Throw was a little bit undercooked. But a shot and see with his second steal of the afternoon. Murphy says the ball was taken legally. I think the press coaching staff agree. O'Connor has the ball. Angerman again. Used as the link man, O'Connor to Wood and Pepper. 
Pepper just trying that little offload on the ground and Johnny tried to force it a little bit early in the second half, but it's something they're going to have to do. And they are going to have to play, but I think, like, you know, you have to have the ball to play, so you have to look after it. But I've, uh, I've been impressed by Rory O'Shock to see. I wonder, is this his first time being in the lineup this year? But for a 12, he's not doing too badly in the inside there. You're having a right go at the forwards today, Johnny Allen, <laughs> suggesting line outs are easy. should stop calling him a 12 as well. He's a pretty good aid, isn't he? he with the feed. Scrum has been solid all afternoon. No shot to see with the ball at his right boot. To Murphy. Out to O'Leary Kareem. And a rare error from PBC. The ball still in hand and Colin offering himself on the touchline. The battle with Cusa continues. Wood high on the chest. And the ball goes into touch. Oh, Joe Brooks in a bit of batter here. <laughs> uh, I think he's trying to protect this player. In fairness to him, I thought there was two shots there that both might have been a little bit high, and they're right in front of the touch judge. So, you know, I think that rides the coach up when you uh, when you need to look after your players. No shortage of physicality, and you do not want to be standing three foot from Joe Burke in an argument, let me tell you that. <laughs> Peter Dugan. With the ball in hand for Munchens. Taking a two. Good delivery to O'Connor. Out to Minogue, the try score to Pepper. Nice little interplay. Pepper uses his winger outside. Cusack on the move. Good scramble from Prez. Prez do very well. And that far touch line, you're susceptible to turnover with an under resourced rook, and Prez saw that opportunity. And Oshin Pepper did very well there as well yeah. to get the ball away, didn't he? But it was actually. Um, Harry Murphy that covered the ground to go over and make that tackle. He made a low tackle and it gave Ben O'Connor the opportunity to get into the rough. Good execution of the first phase attack there again. Um, Oshie Minogue obviously in the middle of that three and pulling the pass out the back. The pace of the game understandably has not been at the level but for Prez it doesn't certainly need to be. They certainly haven't got into themselves and have managed it well thus far as O'Sullivan. Ladies himself at the line out a shot to see the dummy man, but it's gone over the top. Munchens have profited. Frank Murphy in the way of the node. Frank Murphy not sighted, but he gets his call from his touch judge. Those little Two moments. Munchens could have been through a gap there, but on this occasion, Prez survive. And like we said, it's the longer it takes for Munchens to get three or five or seven points on the board, you know, they're going to start to panic a small bit more. They're starting to throw a few more offloads, aren't they, like we saw there. They, they clearly are, you know, under pressure to score early on in this half, but they do need to keep the ball. Bind! Six minutes into the second half, Set. the score remains in this pinner. Jim Munchens School Senior Cup final, semi-final, excuse me, 35 points to 10. O'Connor with the ball. Moves it outside, and Mick Wickstead is on the move here. Tapao is coming across the cover. He's got a call from one of his players on the inside. Well fielded by O'Reardon and Munchens. I like to kick. It's a great kick, a great kick from O'Reardon. He's going to get the bounce. Try score. Fionn Roussel will have the ball. Little bit of footwork from the big man does well, and a lovely little offload. And now Colin is off on the outside. Decides to play it on the inside to O'Leary Kareem. Wonderful play. And O'Leary Kareem is knocked into touch. The work rate from Sean Roussel to get back there and then not panic, use his footwork and get an offload away to, to keep the ball alive and to keep us watching really good attacking rugby, but both sides going at it there. Ben O'Connor again in contact over the far side. You know, he's, he's taking a right to the line, waiting for the winger to hit in and he still has the ability to get the pass away. Peter Dugan goes short. Black, clever little play from St. Munchins and Angerman. We'll set up the platform for an attack for St. Munchens just inside the PBC half. Wood. Yeah, off press for Tries to go. I think that's the, been the difference between both sides, isn't it? Like, have Prez had more ball than Munchens? I'm not so sure. But when they have had the ball and when they've had their set piece strikes, they've made something from them. 
Munchen's trying with all their might with PBC stifling their attack on a couple of occasions. Ball not going to hand. As we said, the score remains 35 points to 10. It is a mountain to climb for Munchen's, but as we saw in yesterday's semi final, Crescent's two tries in the last five minutes recoup 12 points, so there is time yet for St. Munchen's, but they will need to act fast. Sean Roussel called for the inhaler after his uh, <laughs> covering on the ground there in the previous set. We saw in perhaps the last quarter of the game yesterday that a couple of players were potentially feeling the track. It's heavy on the legs. It's a, Like we said, it, it's a fast game on this, you know, so you're going to clock up maybe a few more metres than what you would do ordinarily on a, uh, on a mucky pitch. pitch. Tony Foley enters the fray for St. Munchen's College. In place of Mark Walsh. Ben O'Connor standing directly behind the scrum as two he feeds. Munchins have a little nibble at it, but don't manage to get it. O'Shaughnessy on the way out the back. O'Leary finds Murphy. Murphy had Wickstead outside him. Prez. O'Shaughnessy, the link man. Good carry, met very well by Black of Munchins. And it's good breakdown work. That O'Shea Mano getting in over the top of that. He's had a couple of big plays for Munchens, hasn't he? It's the first or second breakdown penalty, I think, in the game, judging on today's game of free flowing. Yesterday, there's a couple more as uh, the customary flare is set off across the pitch. Dugan, Foley uses the decoy, Black does very well to paw it out of the air. And Munchens rumbling forward with the ball, a couple of... They have advantage here to play, Wood standing in at first receiver, a lot of space opening up on the left-hand side, they decide to swing back. Multiple advantages as you can hear from referee Frank Murphy, and O'Rear decides to go on that side. Foley manages to get the offload to Wood. Still on advantage. Munchens need a score. Black plays it to O'Connor. To Angerman, to Minogue, who's been brilliant all afternoon for Munchens, and now they rumble into the 22 here. Still advantage, says Frank Murphy. O'Connor, good hands. Good hands. Oshin Pepper on the outside to depart the choice score. <laughs> Munchens into touch, but they will come back for a penalty decent platform built off that mall and promising for St Munchens Johnny yeah promising there you know all of a sudden a penalty or two maybe a big set piece uh, a mall like it was you know two penalty advantages within that but they need to find something that gets them into the game so maybe it is through their mall good carry by Oshie been all there to get them back in the front foot as well he's been quite abrasive all day he has a bit of a, an Alex Kandelin stature about him, yeah. isn't he? In the way he was carrying there, you don't, he didn't leave much room open to actually hit him in a soft spot. To get it under him, yeah. Kean Bohan, water carrier for PBC, getting the messages in as the bodies are patched up. His munchins ready, Tommy O'Driscoll, to come into the fray. While Munchens have gone very hard at them, Johnny PBC is exactly as you said, it hasn't been a policy of containment. They try to impose themselves. They're certainly not sitting back in the second half. They're absolutely playing, but they're also solid enough in defence. You know, they're as solid as they need to be at the moment, maybe giving up a little bit of territory, but you know, we saw that in the first half as well. The wind is going into them. I don't think they look like um, they're anyway phased at the moment. Surprised to see Danny Williamson come off. I thought he was having a good game. The 
scrum under the black spot directly in the middle of the field Munchins elect to come to this near side through Pepper it's a nice little interplay by Tapau almost away there but well fielded and marshalled by O'Leary Kareem of Prez has been brilliant on both sides of the ball Rian Burke tasked with the carry gaining the hard yards O'Connor ball not going to hand but it's Wood good little footwork gets on the outside of O'Leary gets the offload Minogue eking forward again Black carries hard Munchins again couple of gain line carries getting closer to that Prez line picked through the rock Minogue carries again he's well tackled on this occasion Prez trying to slow the ball Munchins a metre short here now and it's Minogue again and he's going to get over and Minogue of Munchins gets the first try of the second half in this Munster School Cedar Cup semi-final seems to have hurt himself scoring it will be a big loss for Munchins if he doesn't get back up I think Prez probably need to have a chat with themselves and recalibrate a small bit because it's penalty after penalty now, isn't it? And that's what's getting Munchins back into the game. Phenomenal work rate from Minogue. All afternoon, two carries in quick succession. 35-15 with the conversion from O'Connor to come. Another difficult kick for the Munchins out half. George Slattery giving words of wisdom to his Munchens team. Decent strike by O'Connor, but the wind tails off. 20 points, the deficit, with roughly 20 minutes on the clock. Johnny Holland, we saw a comeback yesterday, but if Munchens are going to manage to get back into this game, they need another quick fire score at the very least. Yeah, that's a big deficit, but, you know, they scored in this half. They have the belief now that they can get one. They think that's going to open up a small bit, but you know, Prez won't be overly concerned with 20 points. They're good. Alex Davenport comes in for PVC. High attrition rate in this game is O'Connor. Restarts Angerman. Instant impact from Davenport, who makes the tackle on Angerman. O'Reardon to O'Connor, it's going to high and hang, and it's going to be loose, and O'Shaughnessy takes the ball. He's been brilliant all afternoon, the PBC captain. Ball was up, says Frank Murphy, and O'Leary tries to play it. Kick somehow ends up back in his hands. It's a good line PBC to be from Oshie again to put them under pressure. Looking to reset, O'Shaughnessy saw people on the outside. Oh, and I think Tony Foley got a hand on that. Frank Murphy says he thought he went with two hands and will restart with a scrum. Prez had a lot of bodies on the outside there. They're very dangerous at turnover ball. Yeah, they had numbers over, right? But just getting the ball out there was proving difficult. You know, Munchins came up a little bit harder. And, uh, and obviously we were able to stop it. Plenty of backline conversations between Rush. Murphy, O'Leary, O'Leary, Kareem, and Set. Colin. It's two heat, feeds the scrum. O'Connor again directly behind the scrum. And the ball is in his hands now. Big high hanging kick. Definitely wasn't the plan. And Munchens will now have a line out inside the PBC half probably should have been along the ground there Johnny but easy from where we're standing yeah shot selection I think you know that's into a wind that obviously you could see it hanging up there couldn't that's you so I think the kick wasn't as poor as what we've seen the outcome to be but I think dribble that along the ground on a 4G and you'll get the, the line out the defensive line out on around the 22 would have been a better game management Dugan finds Black at two and Munchins who got a little bit of change out of the mall a few moments elect to go for the same option again yeah, I think Munchen struggled a bit in the first half of their lineup, but now they're getting a bit of parity there you can see the mall's a big weapon for them Prez try and roll it around the ball has gone back and it's in the hands of O'Connor out to Wood one man ruck O'Connor again Munchen's elect to go in behind to O'Connor a little bit of footwork a high tackle 
by Munchen's shoulder. Tom Wood. Clear comes from Frank Murphy, who says it was over the shoulder, and Prez can breathe a sigh of relief there. Yeah, I think it was just probably slightly high, like a seatbelt tackle, wasn't it? But earlier on, you could hear Frank Murphy in the in his microphone, you know, saying that it was the line of the shoulder or below the shoulder. So he's been watching it quite closely, and I think he got that one right. Ben O'Connor's penalty kick brings us just inside the St. Munchen's half. Prez in no rush for this line out. That's called game management, isn't it? From the forwards. <laughs> That's a rest. <laughs> Michael O'Sullivan. Ball judged to have not been straight, and Munchens will restart with the scrum. Jake O'Reardon calling his forwards in. I'm not sure if it's the weather conditions or not, starting to go against their game, but if you see the flow that they got in the first half, and all of a sudden Munchens get a score in the second half, and now one or two things are going against Prez, you know, that's obviously a crooked line out. The ball is going slightly against them. And, all, and, and Munchens are starting to get their, themselves into the game a small bit more. Stop! O'Reardon goes and it's a lovely little footwork and he gets outside his opposite number two. He rolls on the ground to buy himself a bit of extra time. Anger moves it out to O'Connor. O'Connor finds Wood. Wood finds his brother. Prez look to be strong over that ball and they are. Again, Munchens in the wide channel moving the ball but Prez work on the ground paying dividends and they survive yet another mun munching the attack you know it's interesting there they got the, the turnover but James Wixit is in off his wing he's a vice captain of the team he's looking to settle people down a small bit and I think they do need a little bit of leadership here to get a bit of territory maybe get the, themselves possession up on the other side of the pitch and settle things down a small bit for present O'Connor again finds a line out in a similar position on the other side of the field. You can see through the touch judge's flag that the conditions are quite difficult. Munchens with a strong win on that side of the pitch. O'Shaughnessy takes it. Tui does very well to feel a difficult ball. Murphy. Prez set up. Just inside the half. Little dummy runner O'Shaughnessy again playing his first receiver and Wickstead. It's a decent bounce. Connor McCarthy as Munchens has entered the fray. And we'll come back for a penalty. 14 offside a lot of tired bodies out there for, for both sides. Yeah, it was nice by Jake O'Reardon there. You could see him trying to... He spotted the short side was on there fairly quickly and saw and milked the penalty as well with 14 coming back. I think if you're appraised there, you probably need to hold on to the ball, don't you? You've just gotten into the opposition half for nearly the first time in this half. You know, I, I think they could just... Stifle it a small bit by keeping possession, and I think not only stifle it for Munchens, but they're going to get opportunities themselves if you look at how they played in the first half. So maybe kicking the ball away once they get once they cross the halfway line or so, you might just want to hold on to it a small bit more. Danny Williamson re enters the fray in the back row. In the introduction of Sean Rice for St. Munchens, Oshin Minogue, who's been outstanding for St. Munchens. He's run himself into the ground, Duncan, and he's played very well for his side this afternoon. Yeah, he was uh, obviously very good in defence, but he's also quite an abrasive ball carrier. I think he's gotten two tries for uh, today as well, so he'd be a big miss for him. Black with a good take in the line-out. Angerman hit hard by Prez. Wood deputises O'Reardon, lovely little pass, pre plan move for Munchens. Reardon somehow manages to gather the kick again after a little deflection and Munchens are now inside in the 22. Williamson back in and showing up for his St Munchens team. O'Connor. Lo lovely pass, but he just took his eyes off. Yeah. Got to play the ball here, O'Connor's in danger of breaking out, does very well. To stay off the touchline. O'Leary Kareem trying to clear up a dirty rock there. Tui finds O'Sullivan. Prez move away from the touchline. As Murphy says, use it. Prez again, just trying to set up here for an exit. As O'Shaughnessy carries. It's a bit early to be winding down the clock. 
based on these carries. Roussel, acts as seal, Tui again, to Michael O'Sullivan. Prez just zigzagging an attack here. Yeah, I was hoping Prez were setting up an exit and box kicking, but with the shape of their forwards, and I think 14 people inside the first post. Yeah, look, I think that's, a, that's what happens, you know, you're trying to play safe here now for the last 12, Munch is stuck to move the ball, and it's Wood, and he's going to go, and Wood is going to be underneath the post for St. Munchins, and you can hear the fans in As full I voice. Saying, I think that's a byproduct of Prez trying to play too safe and run down the clock with 12, 13 minutes to go, you know, that's... that's putting themselves under pressure there, they obviously got a turnover penalty, gone quickly. And all of a sudden, no game on, Munchins are back in it. O'Connor drop kicks the conversion for St. Munchins. Johnny Holland, we spoke about game management. There, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was a little bit strange. It was, it's, it's too early for that. I mean, the referees are only looking to find a penalty there. And I think for the greater good of the game, you know, you don't want them looking for penalties, but if a team is going to pick and go left, right, left, right, at, you know, 58 minutes or so, then I think um, we'll all be relieved that he's, he's offering a penalty there. Well, to the Tiger Brian as well. He, got, he received the pass off the quick tap and didn't do the usual tight head forward thing and carry it to the first man he saw. He gave it an extra pass. Revolutionary rugby from the forwards of St. Munchens. It's a fantastic kick by O'Reardon. Munchens fans finding their voice here. 13 points to difference with 11 minutes of normal time left. So shot and see with good footwork. CBC were 12 points ahead with six minutes yesterday. PVC were 11 points by my maths ahead of CBC with roughly 10 minutes to go. So this is not over yet. Well, we saw in the first half when Munchins decided to kick into the wind, they were able to do it, so I don't know why Prez have decided to... Uh, Munchins to have turned PBC over here. They're about 10 metres short of the PBC line now. Prez turn over, and it's a case of anywhere will do, as one or two players are susceptible to cramp. And all of a sudden, that 25-point margin at half-time He's down to 13. But we said, you know, if you get your score, and maybe at school's level, the, the nerves set in and, and you don't play the game the same way that you should be playing it. Like Duncan said there, you know, Liam Tui was marshalling his forwards around the place. Maybe from someone, the, the call should have come to put the box kick up, put the pressure on, on Munchens inside in the Munchens half. There, Ben O'Connor got a kick back into his own 22, and he's looking up at a, a well-set defensive line. I think he could have just got the ball off the pitch and reset into the line out and, and give his forwards a bit of a break. You can see Jake O'Reardon has really uh, increased the urgency in the last 10 minutes. You know, he's on everyone's case, sent up the tempo. Ball went out to touch Jerry through to the hooker to try and get the ball back in straight away. He knows, he sniffs a bit of blood here and he wants much as he keep going for it. George O'Keefe has entered the fray for PBC. As we enter the final 10 minutes of this Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi-final in association with the Irish Examiner, PBC lead by 35 points. To 22 as Munchins have a line out about 16 meters from the PBC line. And O'Shaughnessy reads very well. He's been a nuisance to Munchins set piece all day. Brilliant on both sides of the ball has been the PBC captain. To his clearance is blocked down, and Munchins will have another opportunity here. Reardon again to O'Connor. Lovely little run on the inside, and Munchins are on the move here. Tony Foley. Williamson again, tasked with the hard yards for Munchins. Black got through a hell of, a, of an amount of work. O'Reardon again, Williamson. Big carry again from the number six. Angerman. O'Reardon well, tries to find Burke. Wood again dancing feet, and oh, Wood is going to go! And he's going to score under the post! And I tell you what, the Spinergy Monster School Senior Cup semi final is far from over. Over eight minutes to go on the clock. And after being 25 points down at half time, Johnny Holland, Munchins that are in touching distance in PBC are convening underneath the posts to address the situation.
Yeah, there's players starting to cramp with knows that um, Jake O'Reardon then with a cramp over. Uh, but I think, you know, like Prez played all the rugby in the first half. I don't think Munchens have played the same quality of rugby, but that doesn't really matter. They've, they've played with sustained pressure. Prez aren't exiting. You know, the, the Munchens set piece is good. They're playing with good territory. It's just sustained pressure for Munchens. And, you know, at this stage, all the momentum is with them. Kieran O'Connor's hit two drop goals for those two conversions, isn't he? <laughs> and he nailed both of them. That's uh, impressive. The decibel levels from the Corbally School to our left-hand side have been raised significantly. I was wondering when their crowd would arrive, but they clearly just came in. They're, they're really giving it now. Supermax in Mallow won't know what hit it on the way <laughs> home. O'Connor long to O'Reardon. And O'Reardon says, as much as we want to get back into this game, let's take a breather. And PBC, a little bit shell shot, lads, do you think? I think it's time for a mall, and then another mall, and just slow this thing down a small bit. Yeah, I'll call the ball on to Benishak to see a mall it. Use the two centres then, I think, if they need to move from there. Yeah, you can see the plus line up being set up here. I think we will see a very slow mall to, to run down the top. PBC set piece has been assured all day. The ball taken at the front of the line out. And they're all getting yards, 35 points to 29 here. Tony Foley made his hands in this here. He's done well to fight his way up to the middle of it. Two heat to O'Leary. Rare attacking platform for Prez in his second half. Out to O'Shaughnessy. It's O'Connor with the ball in hand. So elusive, bugs that two tacklers. <laughs> but O'Connor, the ball just drops down. There were hands on heads from PBC supporters here to a right hand side. You cannot take your eyes off this game. But I think they went back to the basics there. The mall got their go forward up the middle with their centres, and then they started to, well, they used Rory Shockensy again with his handling and his distribution to get Ben O'Connor into space on the edge. But it was the first couple of phases where they went back to the basics of what worked for them in the first half. O'Connor at 10 with his hand over his mouth in case Prez can hear him <laughs> in terms of what the playbook is going to be. O'Reardon again feeds to O'Connor. It's a high contestable kick, decent level on it. O'Shaughnessy can't feel it, but the ball is in the hands of PVC. Oh. A judge to have been tackled in the air. Daniel Noonan doing very well. Then he touched him in the air. Not so sure about that one by Frank Murphy's messenger. Frank Murphy saying that the ball was touched and it would have been a St. Munchen's penalty but by virtue of the tackle in the air. Yeah, I think foul play trumps that, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it? It does look soft and I think there's a, a little bit more game management. We can see, um, you know, he's been told to maybe stay down a little bit, get his little bit of treatment and take the sting out of this one. Using some of that second row charm there, Johnny, I think is what you're trying to say. Yeah. They're, they're good at controlling some things, definitely. Time is off, says Frank Murphy. You could see Munchens earlier on when, when they got a sniff just before um, the wood tries, but they were asking about the time because they obviously knew they were in the game. You know, they kept asking the referee for the time, and I think we're talking about it here again because I think he said on, on the microphone there, there's seven minutes left, so there's, there's loads of time to go. O'Connor sends the ball out onto the training pitches. Prez, open up, Prez taking their time coming into this set piece. O'Shaughnessy does well. And Munchens, while in the ascendancy, a silly penalty to give away in that and Prez can buy a few more minutes time here kick the ball down the line and go for another mall. I think that's all you're going to see but Rory Shockness has been a great leader for Prez today he's obviously the captain of the team but he's been taking on a lot um, and obviously Munchen as well are looking to try and get their, their hands back on the ball they have to do something but maybe a little bit over eager on that one I know the game's tight Frank Murphy has issued a warning to Gordon Wood. Six minutes and 45 seconds left. 
in this precise. pulsating Finergy Munster School Senior Cup semi final in association with the Irish Examiner as the sun yet again comes out in Cork. I think, in fairness to Frank, like all eyes are going to be on that clock, and as much as Prez are going to, I think they know what they're doing around here. Obviously, they, they were taking it in the air. I'm not saying Rory Shock because he's making this up, but like they know they're trying to wind the clock down. And in fairness to Munchens, Frank has stopped the clock and he's going to give them every chance. Judging by yesterday's semi-final, six minutes and 45 seconds is an eternity for scores. The difference is six points in favour of PBC. As Ben O'Connor pokes PBC into the 22. Mo Five man line out for PBC. They've gone for a little trick play at the front. Not an advantage. Questionable time to do that in the game. Good carry by Tiger Burner. O'Connor moves it super hands in wood, and there's a chance here for Tapau. She moves oh. it outside. The Munchens just got their angles wrong, and the foot is in touch. As Frank Murphy stops the clock again, O'Leary suffering from a little bit of cramp there. I think Frank's patience is wearing thin with this. Uh, oh, yeah. he's up. The sub was mentioned, but James O'Leary <laughs> had been cramping under the post about 10, 12 minutes ago. So, you know, obviously there's a bit of cramp going around on the hard surface. Time back on, says Frank Murphy. As Michael O'Sullivan. A shot to see with a super call again. The ball juggled backwards. Technically, it should be a penalty if you say no. To E, to O'Leary. Munchens throwing bodies. Prez looking to keep it tight. This is probably a more appropriate time to go zigzagging, but I, don't think, I think there's enough time to get the ball back here as well. Mm. O'Shaughnessy carries. Murphy has been very clear with his communication, but yeah. Johnny Holland and Duncan Williams both said that these opportunities give rise to the referee to give a penalty. Yeah, exactly. But I think much is a bit patient here. They have a bit of time. You know, Prez need to keep their feet at every break down here, or Frank will be penalising them. So. O'Shaughnessy again. He's been a talismanic leader all afternoon for the Wilton side. Tui looks for options. The entirety of the Prez team probably within a 15 meter distance and the ball is coughed up. Frank also confirmed there's loads of time left there <laughs> just as that phase is going on. I think you saw better game management from Prez that time. Yeah. No trick play in the line out, straight into a mall. A uh, little bit of a, an iffy setup, maybe, but you know they're doing their best there to control a little bit better. Four minutes, if I've heard Frank Murphy correctly, it will be an extremely long four minutes for the PBC <laughs> management. It will be a very short four minutes for Ger Slattery and Cove St Munchens. That was like a, a ten minute, three minutes earlier from the seven minutes we got. <laughs> Munchens come down the blind throw rear and wonderful footwork again steps inside a number of PBC players PBC hammering at the ruck Angerman finds Ty O'Brien Munchens inside in the PBC half O'Reardon to O'Connor goes outside and it's Wood and Wood has been dangerous all afternoon and he goes and Wood is a man on the outside it's the Pau oh, and the Pau is tackled he had an option on his inside, the Munchens management are on the pitch, they think that the tackle was high, the touch judge flag is up. Good Frank pass. Murphy is happy with the decision, if you see on the inside. <laughs> Murphy Kareem, in all fairness to Frank Murphy, he has called it all afternoon, Johnny Holland, yeah. if it's on the line of the shoulder and going down. I think that was a fair call, I think it, it looked like it started a little bit high, but it actually came down as opposed to going up, uh, but great work great from 
Gino Leary for The ball to get is the thrown over the line out, and Munchins will have an opportunity here on the five metre line. O'Reardon, Black shows up, out to Angerman. PBC going very hard, hands on heads on the PBC sideline. Oh. But Munchins, the ball goes to ground, bodies strewn here in Musgrave Park. You cannot take your eyes off this. There will be time for another play with PBC at the set piece. Just a previous break up the touch, as we spoke in the first half, the ball inside, you know, as we said, upfield hunting inside, that's where the tries will come. But this has been an attacking game, hasn't it? So if you're a betting man now, you see a score, being, uh, a try being scored. Uh, the defences haven't really been sustained um, throughout the whole game. So if Munchens get another attack, you know, their way will, may well be creeks. Johnny Holland calling for P45s for defence coaches up and down the country <laughs> with the scores being scored today. Yeah, Time is off, we await the official time from Frank Murphy, as no doubt somebody from both sides will ask him. The running clock has 74 minutes, as it is schooled by rugby, we're at 35 minutes at a side. So Frank Murphy has said two and a half. Two and a half minutes to go. We can see Kian Bohan on the pitch here. I think you're you're getting into your leaders. You're starting to, you know, speak about a strategy, how you get far away from your own goal, how you start to control the ball, what they need to do, the next actions for the team. Setting things down a small bit. Well, much like a James Low clearance in the first half from Munchens. They haven't lined Ben O'Connor up on the right-hand side. Looks like they're looking to take a phase at least. Yeah. I think that wind has blown up in the second half a small bit more. It is very difficult now to get out of there. Stay there. Chuhi with the feed. Munchins staying disciplined. The ball has spilled out and O'Shaughnessy no shot to just about manages to get it. Munchins will need to stay disciplined here as PBC take a carry. They're underneath their post. It will be a very difficult clearance kick if they elect to go for it from here. But they are going to take another phase to go out on the right hand side. About 25 metres in from that touchline, and that wind is blowing from right to left. All Munchins players are up. There is nobody in the backfield at all. PBC eking towards that touchline. Frank Murphy says they've got a minute. They're Munchins. also going closer to their own trail, so they want to be careful. Oh, good carry. Oh, shot to see with a great carry there. We're into a matter of seconds here. Time for somebody in St. Munchins to potentially be a hero, but PBC's management. Oh, or Reardon has the ball at the base, and they've gone quickly, and Munchins have a chance here in the corner. This goes to the wire like yesterday. Munchins carry two metres short. Or Reardon gives it to Black, working towards the post. Or Reardon calling for another carry. Tygo Bryan has shown up all afternoon for the Limerick side. There doesn't appear to have been a release, but Frank Murphy says play on. Williamson again. You can cut the tension with a knife here in Musgrave Park or Reardon. With the ball again, Tygo okay. Bryan. The big tight head for St. Munchins has carried very well. You can see Wood sniping around as Angerman decides to take a carry in. Munchins about two and a half metres short of the PBC line. Six points, the difference here. Pick and go from Munchins. That's time, we are into last play. Wood has the ball at his feet. The replacement, Sean Rice. PBC calling for seal, it looks like there is a handover. Oh. And PBC with a wonderful turnover, two and a half metres from the line, that is last play. The ball must be tapped to be kicked out, you can see Munchen's players think that the game is over. I think the press physio does too, <laughs> but they need to tap this and kick it out. Incredible drama here. In Musgrave Park in his Pinergy Munster School's Senior Cup semi-final, PBC 
to victors, 35 points to 29 against St. Munchens. But Johnny Holland, before we get to PBC, the effort from St. Munchens in that second half was something else. I have to give them credit, you know, they, they didn't lose belief. You could see that, you know, um, Gordon Wood got his first try and then they were starting to get on the referee how much time and he got a second try and all of a sudden they're right in that game and I think they were the ones unfortunate not to come away with the win in the end. They had all the sustained pressure. Um, great game, great game between two sides that went out to play rugby. Duncan Williams at uh, PBC into their second successive final. They, do, they don't tend to do it easy. They threw away a lead against CBC but unbelievable performance for them in the first half and it just about gets them over the line. Yeah, look, I think obviously they gave themselves quite a good head start going into half time, but I think they'll have to review their second half performance and some of the decisions they made. They had that line out towards the end of the game, up in Munches 22, and they tried to trick, trick play around the front, or maybe just taking it and setting them all would have been a lot, uh, lot better. Uh, but look, full credit to Munches, Jesus, I thought they did very well, even to be on the line at the end with the chance of winning the game was fairly impressive to, to the comeback they made. Who says schoolboy rugby doesn't serve up drama, lads? We had a final 10 minutes yesterday that we thought we mightn't have got today, but a 35-29, the highest scoring knockout game in Munster Schools rugby I remember in, in, in living memory. And uh, it's cliched, but an unbelievable advert for the game. I think it was you've all tries as well, was it? No, no yeah. penalties, yeah? yeah, you called 30-29 yesterday, did you? Yeah. Maybe you're the one who should start <laughs> calling the scores. As we said, the final score here in Musgrave Park in his Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi-final in association with the Irish Examiner. PBC 35, St. Munchens College 29. Christians Brothers College and Crescent College Comprehensive played out a 15 points all draw yesterday and will replay in Towman Park next Tuesday. We're off to catch our breath. From me, Dara Frawley, Duncan Williams and Johnny Holland. Thanks for tuning in and have a good afternoon.